This is Cliff Palace, the largest alcove cliff dwelling in the entire world, located in Colorado's Mesa Verde National Park. Altogether, there are more than 4,300 sites so far discovered within the 82 square mile national park. The perfection of these pre-made permanent dwellings in a setting of an abundant wild food and fresh flowing water must have had a sharp cosmic contrast with the ever-present danger of falling from the cliffs. Mesa Verde provided both kind abundance and harsh punishment for error. One can intuit that humans have lived in the vast series of alcoves at Mesa Verde ever since they first laid eyes on them. The dwellings might have seen a flurry of family and festivities for generations at a time, followed by centuries of silence. They built giant structures on the plateaus of the mesas when the population was plentiful, but came back to the cliffs during hardships or hostility. On the flat landscape of the upper mesa, people laid out straight parallel roads and built square uniform buildings next to crops planted in neat even rows. But in the cliff dwellings, trails wind through valleys according to ancient contours, and people live in shelters scattered along the cliffs by the earth and the eons. Because the alcoves are a forever dry and sheltered space for thousands of people and are lined with the flat block-shaped building stones that had flaked off of the ceilings, those first inhabitants were immediately afforded the luxury of free time, so they domesticated turkeys, planted crops, made tools, and raised families. Mesa Verde saw its first human inhabitants just after the last ice age before 10,000 BCE. Increased sophistication was indicated by a basket maker period around 400 CE. With a spike in population and enhanced architectural capacity a couple hundred years later, the families in and around Mesa Verde became a thriving interdependent series of communities. The developmental Pueblo period prior to a thousand years ago has all of the elements that we would recognize as early civilization, including the domestication of animals, division of labor, a uniform system of architecture, and a vast system of agriculture. In the classic Pueblo period after a thousand years ago, the sophistication of the civilization would rival that of any found in Europe or Asia at the time in terms of the quality of life of the average citizen and the complexity of the society in which they lived. This was a sentiment expressed by some Spanish conquistadors who had visited the Pueblo late in the 16th century, remarking that they felt like the degree of civility within the Pueblo culture was greater in fact than their own, a remark that they had never made about another group of people. We come off of the mesa now, down into the dwellings at the step house. Partially reconstructed, we can see here a recreated subterranean dwelling using the original style of workmanship. It shows the level of artistry that must have been demonstrated all throughout the dwellings. And we finish at the balcony house, an incredible system of dwellings built into a massive alcove made to be incredibly defensible. Both a place to secure grain and other food storage throughout the year to keep them away from animals, and a place to be defended and secure against marauding invaders. So the stone dwellings were built and rebuilt over the centuries into communities along a strata of the cliffs in a mountain range that rises out of the desert like an island paradise. Even the strongest structures built in our modern vein are no match for the dwellings made by the world that will never see a drop of rain. 
So long after our era is ashes, and our convoluted system crashes, the ancient sanctuaries made by the world remain.